Ghost notes are little taps that fill in the space in between a macro rhythm, oftentimes a backbeat. They add contrast, and they give depth and dimension to our playing. I'm gonna show you the technique that we need for ghost notes as well as like the golden exercise for mastering them and using them effectively. First things first, we have to be comfortable with three technique concepts for these to actually work properly. We don't want our ghost notes to be too high or too loud because then they completely lose the effect. These are simply just really low taps. Most of the time with ghost notes, we shouldn't really need to use our fingers that much unless we're doing something really crazy. The motion of our wrist should just be a little flick. Taps usually come from where the stick is resting, so we don't really wanna lift the stick up that much to play them. We want the stick's movement to be natural without anything in our body stopping the motion. That means don't be tense anywhere at all fully relaxed. Theoretically, the stick should want to come back up to where it started, but at really low heights, a lot of it is from the elasticity of our twitch muscles. So make sure you're not pressing down, unless you want to press down. They are always just flicking and coming right back. At this low height, you can still hit the drum at full velocity, and it's going to be quiet. You don't have to just touch the top of the drum head. We still want our teeny tiny little notes to have a full sound. There's a lot of different exercises for practicing your taps. I recommend just playing eight on a hand with taps in front of a mirror or on video. Also watch this video to learn how to use slow motion on your phone to make your practicing more efficient. The second concept is being able to smoothly differentiate between the louder accents and the tiny little ghost notes. So the things we really have to know for this is how to do upstrokes and downstrokes. I've covered these concepts in depth in my stroke types video and my how to play fast video. So be sure to watch those because they'll help a ton. I'm just gonna briefly go over what we need to know for this. So we have upstrokes, which is the prep from a soft note to a loud note come from playing a tap and naturally following the rebound of the stick up to wherever the next note is starting. On the way up, we can follow the movement of the stick by opening our hand a little bit, still keeping our fingers on it, but just allowing the stick to breathe and move freely. Downstrokes are like the same thing, but backwards. So it's from playing a loud note to a soft note. So instead of opening up our hand and following the stick back up, we're just gonna keep our fingers closed, not squeezing, to allow the back of the stick to touch our hand. That's what will stop the stick, keep it at a low height, and prepare you for playing a soft note. Don't squeeze. Don't force the stick to stop. That'll get you stuck in the mud and you won't be able to flow. Though when we're playing faster, we have a quick turnaround with no time to waste. We have to use the whip stroke. This is where we're just tapping, and then we make our hand and wrist go limp while we lift up the arm and bring it back down. Every concept with the whip is exactly the same as the last strokes we talked about though. So as soon as the stick hits the drum, don't squeeze. Just let your fingers bring the stick to the back of your hand and then keep going. So a third concept is the actual independence and rhythms of these ghost notes. The exercise we're about to do is really the fastest and most effective way to get going. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be setting the metronome to 90 beats per minute. I recommend starting slower, turning on all the subdivisions for whatever we're working on, and really making sure that you're precise with where you're putting these things. All we're going to do is play eighth notes on our hi-hat, two and four on the snare drum, one and three on the bass drum. Then we're going to grit out these ghost notes in sixteenths and triplets in every way that we possibly can. Maybe it sounds tedious, but this is really the most effective way for you to be able to do anything that you want to do. So first we're going to do our ghost notes on the quarter notes, which is our first beat of each 16th note group. Now let's do all the eighth notes. First we're just going to isolate the E of beats one and three. Now we're going to keep isolating the E, but we're going to add beats two and four. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the uh. So we're just gonna isolate the uh on beats two and four. All right, now let's put the uh on every beat. Now let's try doing E and uh for every beat. Now let's start putting groups of two together. So we're gonna isolate the first beat of each group of 16th notes, so the quarter note, with another 16th note. We're just gonna go through E, then and, and then uh. So we've already done one and and with the eighth notes. Now let's do one and uh. So moving on to E now, we're gonna do E and and. So because we're playing accents on two and four, we're gonna have to play two E and four E and, right? We're gonna hit our accent, then just let it ride, but don't just drop the stick because you're gonna lose control not playing time. We've already done E and uh, so now let's move on to and. So the only two to do with this is just and uh. Here 
Here we have to do a group of three as well, but it's the opposite. We have to do tap, tap, up instead of down, tap, tap. So this is where we use that upstroke, whip stroke kind of thing, where we're just gonna whip our arm up and just let it fall down. Now be creative here, start just putting things together. If you want to, you can write down whatever you do, or you can do what I do, but I want you to just experiment with moving some of these different 16th note groupings around. Even though this is an exercise, you can come out of this with really usable ideas. Once you feel really comfortable going through any of these options smoothly, then we can bump up the tempo a bit. Just go up like five or 10 clicks at a time, repeat over and over again until you feel like it's perfect, and then you just do it again. That's how we get going faster. Start basic, and when you start branching out, don't go crazy, because we're trying to build muscle memory here. We're just trying to expand our mind into thinking about more things at the same time. You can also use doubles and buzzes on these ghost notes. If you don't know how to play doubles consistently, you can watch my doubles video and it'll show you exactly how to do that. Everything's the same. You're just gonna play a diddle or a buzz. I accidentally threw a triplet in at the end there, which kind of foreshadows the next half of this exercise. So now we do the same thing, but with triplets. Now there's only three notes, so it's a little bit easier, but we still have to be good at our triplet subdivisions. So if I'm playing my eighth notes here, but what we're gonna work on is slower. Then we'll beef it up in a minute. So first, all triplets. Now we're gonna start isolating one at a time. So first we'll isolate the second triplet partial. Now the third triplet partial. Now we'll do the first two. Now we'll do the first and third. Now we'll do the second and the third. So if we speed this up and make it twice as fast, these are gonna be 16th note triplets, so we get one group of triplets for every eighth note. But the ratio is still the same, it's just faster. So I'll quickly go through all the options like this as well. Then do the same process you did with 16th. So start blending them together a little bit, start speeding it up, and then change the beat. Now try to do the same thing, but with both 16ths and triplets. Just like anything else we do, this will take some time to be really comfortable. Don't expect to just start this right now, and then by the end of the day, you got it. We wanna be able to have muscle memory with the subdivisions that we're playing with. So spend a lot of time on one pattern over and over and over again, so you can do it without even thinking about it. It'll become part of your vocabulary, part of your language, and then you'll be able to just do it without thinking. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, leave a comment. Check out the description for the link to the free exercise that we used in our video today. Down there, there's also links to my website for lessons. There's a link to my Instagram, and there's a link to my music. Be sure to hit the bell to stay up to date because I got new videos coming out every week. All right, thanks for watching.